Good morning. I'm Bobby Mills, Special Assistant to the President of Damon College, and I'm honored to be your Master of Ceremonies today in the opening of the Academic and Wellness Center here today on Main Street. This transformed building is not only something that the college should be proud of, it's something that the town of Amherst should also be very proud of. But by any measure, I am definitely the least important part of this historic event at Damon. Those who have led the college effort to repurpose the venerable former YMCA building and create this beautiful academic and wellness center are the real heroes of today's grand opening. You will hear from Damon's key leaders about the vision and purpose surrounding this impressive academic center in a few moments. Finally, the fact that we have such a great turnout of faculty, staff, students, community residents, and both political and business leaders demonstrates the total community support for this four-year journey from purchase to completion that has been enjoyed. Most importantly, this journey was for our exemplary students who deserve a world-class academic facility, and they have one. Now it is my honor and privilege to introduce our first speaker today, Dr. Gary Olson. As one of his special assistants, for better or worse, I get to see every day the passion, focus, and expertise that President Olson brings to his team approach of making Damien College one of the finest institutions in the nation. While the purchase of this building may have taken place before he arrived at Damon, his steadfast support for the project and leadership help bring the project to fruition in time for classes to begin on September 8th. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to introduce the president of Damon College, Dr. Gary Olson. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm delighted to see so many people here, friends of Damon, members of the faculty and staff, uh, Lots of people, we, we didn't really think there'd be this many, so I'm really glad to see it. We're here this morning to celebrate the opening of the Damon College Academic and Wellness Center. Uh, what began as a 50-year-old YMCA building has evolved into a modern, spacious, state-of-the-art academic complex. And I hope you take the tour, you're gonna be surprised. This sleek new facility is the result of the strategic way in which Damon's faculty, staff, Cabinet and Board of Trustees provide the infrastructure and tools necessary for our faculty to teach and for our students to learn. I applaud the Damon team of Vice Presidents, Deans, faculty, staff, even past Presidents who helped design and implement the plan for this facility that now serves the interests of our students campus-wide. The result is a true center of excellence, one you're going to see later today. I'd like to recognize quite a few individuals, so I ask each one to raise his or her hand when I call the name, but let's hold the applause until we get through all of them, and that way we can get to, to the tour sooner. So first, several members of the Damon College Board of Trustees are with, with us today. Chairman Dale Demjanic, uh, Board Member Kathy Campbell, Board Member Caroline Burke, uh, Board Member Rich Day, Board Member Robert Kaur, and one of our newest board members, Art Wingerter, is here with us. Uh, we're delighted to have with us a former president of Damon, Martin Annisman, whose uh, leadership uh, began this whole process to uh, convert the Y. Uh, also former vice president of business affairs and the Damon official who oversaw most of the early work on the center and who helped arrange for the financial resources to bring it about, Bob Beiswanger is with us. I uh, also want to recognize three members of the team that provide legal representation to the college. Ms. Tracy Lapardi, our lead counsel uh, at Harris Beach Law Firm, as well as Brian Mahoney from the same firm, and also Ken Manning of Phillips Lytle, uh, a longtime friend of Damon uh, College. By the way, these are two of the finest law firms in New York, and we're pleased to, especially uh, working with Tracy and Ken. We're also pleased to have with us uh, Adam Sassone, a key economic development official of Governor Cuomo's administration. Uh, also with us is Lori Abunader, the business development manager of Buffalo Niagara Enterprise. Uh, we have a number of officials from the local YMCA association with us. Uh, they're probably here to say a final farewell, I guess, to the old Y building. 
They are Ann Taylor, Allison Lawson, the executive director of Lancaster, and uh, of course, Buddy Campbell. So uh, thank you for being here. It's gonna be hard for them to recognize their old building, but I hope they're still proud of it. We're also delighted to have with us one of the true friends and supporters of Damon, Shelley Drake, the senior vice president of M&T and president of M&T's uh, uh, foundation, as well as a number of other M&T people that are with us here. And I want to give special recognition and a special thank you to the team that helped design and transform the former Y into the beautiful building that you'll be seeing a little bit later. I want to thank, for example, Rick Schott, our Vice President for Business Affairs, for picking up the mantle from Bob Weiss, Weiswanger, keeping the project on track, and making sure the facility was ready on time. I didn't believe it would happen. Uh, you would not have believed this room about a week and a half ago. Uh, and also along those lines, our Director of Facilities, Don Phillips, for making sure that on a daily basis everything was getting done right. Uh, and boy, he, he took it personally. He was here making sure everything was done right. I want to recognize three key members of R&P Oak Hill, the construction and engineering team that were the true transformers of the building, uh, Ms. Mercedes Calloway, the project manager, Chris Hogan, and Tom Zestakowski are here. Uh, I also want to thank the team from Flynn Battaglia Architects who took our vision for the center and turned it into the perfect facility to meet the needs of our students and faculty. And they are Chris Less, Nancy Redeye, Lauren Kaufman, Ron Battaglia, and Mark Wendell. So thank you. And finally, yes, finally, I want to thank all of the dedicated Damon College faculty, staff, and administrators who worked tirelessly to determine the programs and activities and class configurations and everything that had to be figured out ahead of time to make this building uh, work. So let's give all of these special people a big wildcat round of applause. Let me close by saying how proud all of us should be for providing this beautiful academic and wellness center for our students. It shows that even in times of great uh, fiscal restraint and tight budgets, if we work together, watch our dollars, and do innovative and strategic planning, we can provide uh, first-rate facilities like this one uh, for those who choose to come to Damon for their college experience. So thank you everyone for coming. I hope uh, you'll stay for the ribbon cutting. There are a few more speakers and then we'll do the ribbon cutting and then the uh, tour and then I understand there's refreshments in the back. Thank you, Dr. Olson. A, a beautiful transformational and purposeful building like this one is only as good as the programs that go on inside of it. And great academic programs and a great facility don't match up unless there's a great academic leader behind that union. Damon is so fortunate to have Dr. Michael Brogan, our Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the College, as our academic captain of the Academic and Wellness Center team at Damon College. Thanks to Dr. Brogan, his deans, department chairs, and faculty of the college, this new building now stands as further evidence of the excellence in academics and commitment to students that are the hallmarks of Damon College. Friends of Damon, I'm pleased to introduce our academic commander-in-chief and dean of the college, Dr. Michael Brogan. Thanks, Bobby. So now Bridget would say, you see Dr. Olson and uh, Bobby Mills, they have their sport coat buttoned and so on, and, and I don't. And Bridget would say, there's no excuse now. There's a health center and, <laughs> and there's cardio. Machines that you can get. So next year, next building, I'll have my sport coat buttoned. <laughs> so as the Vice President for Academic Affairs and, and Dean of the College, and on behalf of the entire faculty, I'd like to thank our President, Dr. Gary Olson, and our trustees for their commitment and persistence toward extending our campus facilities and delivering a center which will truly enrich our curriculum. This new center, which is focused upon health, wellness, and community, will bridge conceptual perspectives to functional use. It will provide for interprofessional collaboration for our health, behavioral, and community-related programs. The nature, utility, and opportunity that this type of integrated space offers 
will serve to enrich our curriculum by engaging all constituents of the college while cultivating new ideas, facilitating research, and reinforcing knowledge. The transformation of this building is truly remarkable, and we've created a vital hub that joins academics and wellness. The advanced technology capabilities in the classrooms and labs will take learning to an even higher level and add a new educational dimension to our exceptional academic programs. Here at Damon, we are extremely proud of our liberal arts tradition and education, which is the heart of our curriculum, which we celebrate along with the success of all our undergraduate and graduate programs. Three programs which creatively blend the undergraduate and graduate experience by way of seamless and efficient design, athletic training, healthcare studies, and physical therapy will be housed within this facility. This space and associated resources offer our students the most advanced teaching and learning platforms available. From an academic and clinical perspective, we are poised to train those who will meet the needs of an active and aging rehabilitative population. Not only by preparing athletic trainers and physical therapists, but by also training nurses, physician assistants, social workers, and public health advocates. I'm very grateful and I'm very proud to be part of Damon College. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. One of the major benefits of this outstanding facility is the positive ripple effect it will have on other programs, activities, and projects on Damon's main campus. The Wellness Center not only has allowed the college to accommodate its impressive growth in its health professions programs, it has freed up desperately needed space on the main campus for classrooms, faculty office space, counseling services, and Damon's growing intramural and Division II NCAA athletic programs. While the Academic and Wellness Center is truly an academic center of excellence, it will also include a state-of-the-art fitness facility that Dr. Brogan talked about so fondly, and, and um, for our students, faculty, and staff, and the headquarters for our intramural programs and club activities for students. Our next speaker epitomizes the important balance between academics, wellness, and sport. I'm privileged to introduce to you another academic center of excellence, a professor, a teacher, and the leader of Damon's student athletes, our director of athletics, Miss Bridget Nyland. Thank you, Bobby. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank the entire Damon community for allowing uh, athletics and recreation to be a part of this wonderful academic building. Um, today, you not only see the launch of a wonderful academic building, but you also see the official launch of really not only Damon Athletics, but now Damon Athletics and Recreation. Since being asked by Dr. Olson last July to take on the role of Director of Athletics, it's been very important to me that we just not only engage our student athlete community, but also our entire campus community in wellness and recreation. I don't want anyone to feel left out. And where you're sitting in today, and you look across the hall, um, is now a place for all of our students. It'll be a student-focused, a student-based recreation and intramural facility. During its downtime, especially during the summer, we will be engaging our community to increase wellness within our area. I could not possibly do what we've done in the past two years without the incredible staff that I get to work with each day. They're in this room. They've made so much happen. Everyone from athletics to facilities to academics, the support we have for each other has truly allowed us, under the leadership of Dr. Olson, to move us forward. Finally, I just also want to say, I think many of us in this room spent time in this gym when it was a Y. We learned how to swim in the room that is now the, the, the um, fabulous fitness center. So for us, it's a little bit of an emotional day. I saw Vivian Heverly and Allison Lawson and Art Wingeter. We've, we've all lived in this building, and so it truly marks another part of what Damon is becoming, and that is truly Amherst's college. We want to be looked at by the town of Amherst and the residing communities as part of this community, not just for health sciences, not just for academics, but just a place that they feel welcome. And thank you, Flynn Battaglia, for making that happen and seeing that vision come through and all the people that helped this day become a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. The transformation from old YMCA building to Damon College Academic and Wellness Center 
would not have taken place without the strong, consistent support of our next speaker, Dr. Barry Weinstein, supervisor of the town of Amherst. The Academic and Wellness Center is tangible evidence of a strong working partnership among the college leaders, the town of Amherst leadership, and the community. Whether it is our campus beautification effort, our signature stone wall, or our first ever Damon Day in Amherst, a big reason for that great partnership is Dr. Barry Weinstein. Ladies and gentlemen, Supervisor for Town of Amherst, Dr. Barry Weinstein. Thank you. Thank you. That was a surprise uh, introduction. Uh, Dr. Brogan already alluded to me as aging rehabilitation. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm very appreciative. On May 8th, 2015, I had the honor of attending the ceremony, celebrating the groundbreaking of Damon College's Academic and Wellness Center, and I promised I'd be back. I just didn't know it was gonna be late. Now, four months and $5.6 million later, we see the remarkable transformation of an aged, former YMCA building into a modern, state-of-the-art facility. Damon College is an integral part of the Western New York community, and it's particularly important to the town of Amherst. It has been named a College of Distinction for 2015-16 and made the honor roll of great colleges to work for. Damon is now in the provisional year for NCAA Division II membership. Congratulations. The new Academic and Wellness Center will serve not only Damon College Athletics, who will provide a venue for all students and faculty to stay physically fit. In addition, it will provide enhanced facilities for Damon's already highly acclaimed physical therapy and athletic training programs. Damon will share this remarkable facility with area elementary and high school and community organizations. On behalf of the town of Amherst, I thank Damon College for enhancing our town with a first class facility, which can only positively impact the lives of students, faculty, and the entire Western New York community. Thank you for investing in Amherst. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Our next speaker is Damon College's representative in the New York State Assembly, Assemblyman Ray Walter. As many of you know, I came from the land of dysfunction, Washington, D.C., where I spent most of my professional life working with members of Congress and their staffs to say it is refreshing to work with Assemblyman Walter is an understatement. He and his great staff are always accessible and are always there for the college. We are fortunate to have his advocacy and support in Albany and here at home in Western New York. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to introduce our state representative, Assemblyman Ray Walter. Thanks, Bobby, thank you. Thank you all very much, Bobby. That was a, a wonderful introduction. And Dr. Brogan, I can't button my jacket either, if it makes you feel any better. <laughs> I'll have to take advantage of your health facilities as well. Um, thank you very much for inviting me here, here to speak today. Uh, I'm so happy that Damon has uh, chosen to expand their campus and create this state-of-the-art academic and wellness center. Uh, Damon College has truly set the bar for academic excellence in our community. This new facility will play a key role in future academic success and the promotion of healthy lifestyles by uh, providing students with space and equipment they need to succeed. It also fills a critical need accommodating Damon's growing healthcare programs. And it's essential to give our students seeking future employment in healthcare professions their best possible chance for success. These young women and men are future doctors, nurses, athletic trainers, and physical therapists. Careers that are desperately needed to provide the healthcare services our rapidly aging population demands. This academic and wellness center will contribute to their success and in turn be beneficial to the health of our community. The completely refurbished gym will offer additional options for college and intramural recreational programs, be used as supplemental space for the college's popular youth sports camps, and be available for use for, use for local sport activities. It will also serve as team practice site for Damon Athletics as they move boldly into Division II, and I know you're gonna be very successful uh, thanks to your efforts, Bridget, great job. Last but not least, I wanna thank all those who made this Academic and Wellness Center possible. The refurbishing of the former YMCA building, as was stated before, a $5.6 million project that revitalized what could have been an empty building sitting in the middle of our beautiful town. It, it may, is no small task, 
and was made possible by the hard work and dedication of many. So thank you, President Olson, the Board of Trustees, Board Chair Dale Demianic, and the entire Damon College community for making this a reality and for allowing me the honor of speaking here today. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. At a time of increased partisanship in our political systems, it is gratifying to see the bipartisan support that our programs and activities receive in Albany from members on both sides of the political aisle. So even though our next speaker does not have Damon College in his assembly district, we have decided unanimously to adopt Assemblyman Robin Schiminger as a wildcat emeritus. Whether it is attending our Distinguished Leaders Lecture Series, being at college's announcement about our entry into Division II athletics, or showing his support for events like today's, Robin Schiminger is there for us. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce one of those true friends of Damon College, the Assemblyman representing the 140th Assembly District of New York, Assemblyman Robin Schiminger. Emeritus. Emeritus. Awesome. A wildcat emeritus, wow. This is a great day for Damon, and uh, it's nice to be here with so many old friends and new friends. Everything, I think, has already been said, so I wanted to tell you all a little secret. This is the secret. For a long, long time, I have envied Ray Walter. <laughs> my, my assembly district, is across Niagara Falls Boulevard in the town of Tonawanda, city of Tonawanda, North Tonawanda, Riverside, and so on. In my assembly district, I do not have, I've got two wonderful hospitals, but I do not have a single institution of higher learning. Ray Walter has a community college. He's got a university ranked in the top 100 in the country. And most importantly, he's got Damon College right here. So, Ray, I really do envy you. <laughs> this is a very special day because you've adaptively reused a building right here in the heart of Amherst, a YMCA. You've put together a tremendous team from the architects to the construction companies to the leadership on the board to make this happen. The vision of Dr. Anisman and the implementation under Gary Olson's leadership really is, sends a tremendous message about your Damon College, Amherst's Damon College, my Damon College, that Damon College is indeed alive and well and thriving and getting healthier all the time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schiminger. Damon College has been blessed to have excellent working relationships with members of the U.S. House of Representatives as well also from both sides of the aisle, including, of course, our own member of Congress and frequent Damon guest, Brian Higgins. But we are also very fortunate to have built a solid working relationship with other members of the New York congressional delegation, including Congressman Chris Collins, who represents the 27th District of New York. Although Congressman College, Collins cannot be with us today, he's in Washington voting, I'm pleased to recognize one of his key staff professionals, Samantha Reedy who is here with a special recognition for the college. Dr. Olson, would you please come forward to accept a tribute from the congressman? And Samantha, I know she has stage fright, so let's give her a big wildcat welcome to come on up here. Way to throw me under the bus. Um, like he said, the congressman could not be here today. It's a session day, but I'm here on his behalf, and uh, I wanted to present you with a congressional commendation, just acknowledging the success you hear or you have here on your hands. I mean, like you know, the assemblyman said, everything's already been said, and this place is just beautiful. I came here for the tour, so again, congratulations, Thank and you this is for you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Samantha, and please tell the Congressman we appreciate very much this recognition. Uh, we also have uh, a, uh, a certificate of recognition from our State Senator, Senator Mike Ranzenhofer, who could not be with us today, and we will uh, display that proudly in the, uh, in the halls. And Gabby Ortiz was here and left it with us, and we'll uh, make sure it's properly framed and, and recognized. 
Our final speaker is literally one of the architects of this beautiful building project and someone who helped to transform a 1962 yellow brick building into what we use see today. We're honored to have as our final speaker, Mr. Ron Battaglia of the Flynn Battaglia Firm. Ladies and gentlemen, Ron Battaglia. Well, I know uh, a lot of people in the audience, and we are just delighted to have been involved in this project. Uh, I indeed grew up in the shadow of this building, and my three children learned to swim here. Uh, so I had a lot of fond memories of this building. Uh, watched it over the last few years as it declined, and knew the writing was on the wall, that the Y was going to be moving elsewhere. And it was just great, uh, uh, and, and it really is a tribute to Damon College that they they had the wisdom and, and the foresight to uh, take this building on. Uh, we've been just delighted to work with, uh, with the college, uh, finding a, just a, a rewarding experience. Uh, a lot of the projects we do are in the public college realm, and it's a much different situation there. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, debate that goes on when those buildings get built, and in this one, they had a plan. Uh, they had the, uh, the resources, and they had the strong direction uh, from the president on down to get it done. So on, on behalf of my whole team, uh, I was just delighted to work uh, on this project and drive by it every day. Uh, and uh, I, I just think it's a fabulous transformation, and we're pleased to have been involved in it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. Well, that concludes our list of speakers for today's grand opening. Now I'd like to ask uh, President Olson, Dr. Weinstein, and Chairman Demyonik to honor us by cutting the ceremonial ribbon. Dr. Olson, will you do the honors? Okay, I'd like to, I'd like to formally open this facilities right now, and I ask that uh, you go ahead and cut the ribbon. Thank you.